Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us. We are glad you are here today. My name is Alyssa Carlson. I'm from the Denver Museum of Nature and Science. And welcome to a special presentation here on a Saturday. Something big must be happening, and it is. We have a huge historic space launch today. Today, I'm pleased to be joined by Steve Lee. He's going to give us a short presentation, a little bit of background and context around today's launch. And then we'll jump back and forth between the live stream from NASA and some more information from Steve. Let us know in the chat uh, or in the Facebook comments, we have two audiences today, what you're excited about. Um, if you've ever seen a live launch before, I don't know that I have. We're glad that you're here. And without any further ado, Steve Lee, go ahead and take it away. Well, good afternoon, everyone, and uh, welcome to uh, this presentation by the Denver Museum of Nature and Science. This is an event that I've been looking forward to for about the last 10 years. Um, let me just jump right in. What we're going to do is give you a little bit of background on the, uh, uh, the SpaceX Crew Dragon vehicle and capabilities, the whole NASA commercial crew program, and then what's happening today um, and what the mission of today's launch actually is. So let me switch to some slides. There we go. That looks great. So uh, what this whole uh, mission is called right now is Launch America. And uh, the reason for that is uh, for anybody that's older than about 13 or 14 years old, you likely remember the space shuttles launching. From 1981 until 2011, uh, that was our uh, taxi to orbit for astronauts and cargo. Uh, we built the International Space Station starting in, uh, in the year 2000, and uh, 135 space shuttle missions flew. But in July of 2011, that program ended. That was the last flight of American astronauts on an American rocket from American soil. And you're going to be hearing that a lot in the media, I'm sure. This is all about having uh, uh, homegrown spacecraft rockets and uh, being able to launch again from Kennedy Space Center. And so in 2014, uh, NASA issued contracts to two uh, commercial entities, um, and they were tasked with uh, building space taxis, if you will, that would provide the transportation from the Earth to the International Space Station and back. And so those two companies are uh, Boeing, and this is what's called the, uh, the Boeing Starliner, and the second one is SpaceX, and this is called the Crew Dragon. Um, and so what we're seeing today actually is the first launch with a crew on board for the Crew Dragon spacecraft. And so this is a view of uh, Crew Dragon in orbit, an artist's uh, view. And uh, this gives you a little bit of an idea for how large it is. It's uh, you know, roughly 30 feet top to bottom. Um, we have a, a, a person here to scale, but this gumdrop shaped uh, capsule on top is the, the pressurized crew cabin. And then the bottom part is what's called the trunk. And uh, that has uh, solar panels on it. It provides the, uh, the major propulsion for uh, while they're in orbit. It uh, provides the life support, much of the electronics, things like that. And so uh, this is all stacked on top of a SpaceX uh, Falcon 9 rocket. Uh, this stretches about 220 feet, top to bottom. So when this is, uh, is actually launching, imagine a 20-story building uh, being thrown from the Earth into orbit. And so this is an actual uh, view in the, the assembly hangar of today's rocket. Um, it has nine uh, Merlin engines, they're called, that provide all the thrust. There's a first stage and a second stage, and then the Crew Dragon sits all the way on the top. Um, and so once they're ready to uh, prepare for launch, this happened uh, middle of last week or thereabouts, they roll the assembled rocket with the Crew Dragon on board uh, out to the launch pad. 
And uh, here it is arriving at the pad. And uh, it's on what's called a strong back. This uh, uh, structure here provides support for the, the rocket. And then once they get to the pad, they plug it into the pad structure, which is this large uh, gray structure here. And the base of the rocket uh, ties into that. And then the entire uh, assembly is levered to the vertical. And here's the the full-up rocket sitting on the launch pad. And I should say, this is launch pad 39A at uh, Kennedy Space Center. This has a, a long and illustrious history. This was the pad that many of the Apollo missions launched from, including Apollo 11, the first lunar landing. Uh, more than half of the space shuttle missions launched from this pad. And then about five years ago, SpaceX got a, a long-term lease with NASA. They uh, tore down much of the old pad. They assembled this new pad that's specifically designed for launching the uh, Falcon 9 rockets, and in particular, the, uh, the Crew Dragon version of that. And so uh, just to give you an idea of how these missions work, uh, there was a dress rehearsal uh, a little over a year ago, March of 2019. And this was called Demo Mission 1. This was an on-crewed uh, launch of the, uh, of the uh, Crew Dragon. It uh, arrived in orbit. It docked with the International Space Station. And then eight days later, it uh, returned to Earth, parachuted uh, into the ocean, and was picked up by a, a ship. And uh, in the operational world, once these, uh, these missions are routine, they expect that the crews, when they return, will be landing just a few tens of miles offshore in the Atlantic Ocean, offshore from Kennedy Space Center. So within an hour, they'll have retrieved the capsule, brought it on board their ship, bring the crew out, and, uh, and probably helicopter them back to uh, Kennedy Space Center. So that's the, the background. And uh, what today's mission is, is called Demo Mission 2, and it's carrying uh, two astronauts. Uh, on the left here, we have uh, Bob Behnken, and on the right is Doug Hurley. So both of these uh, astronauts joined NASA, or joined the Astronaut Corps in 2000, and uh, both of them had uh, two missions on board the uh, space shuttle and uh, a tour of a, a week or so on board the International Space Station. Uh, Doug Hurley has the distinction of being the pilot on the very last shuttle mission that flew in 2011. So that's our, uh, uh, our crew. Both of them are, were test pilots uh, in the military. Hurley was a Marine pilot. Um, Benkin was uh, an Air Force pilot. And, uh, they both distinguished themselves as, as uh, astronauts for NASA. And uh, so this is sort of a view of uh, the top of the rocket and the launch pad. So here's our Crew Dragon. And you'll notice this uh, structure going off to the right. That's what's called the Crew Access Arm. And uh, if you've ever flown on an airliner, you walk down a jetway to get on the, uh, from the terminal to the, uh, to the plane. This is the same idea. This uh, provides the path that the uh, crew walks down to climb into their, uh, their uh, crew dragon. And then that, uh, that uh, structure uh, rolls away or, or uh, rolls back from the, uh, the spacecraft uh, just before launch. And so this was a, a few days before the last launch attempt. Uh, both uh, Hurley and Benkin are married to, uh, to astronauts, and both of them have young sons. Um, so this is uh, Doug Hurley with his wife and 10-year-old uh, and, uh, son, Jack, up on top of the, the gantry, and he's pointing out the walkway down to, get, uh, to uh, get into the capsule. So uh, imagine uh, getting ready to have your father uh, take off from the planet and being able to get that close and see what's happening. So let's, uh, let's move up to today. 
Um, this actually, well, I'm sorry, let's, let's go back a few days. If you remember, we uh, tried to launch this mission Mon uh, Wednesday afternoon, and there was just awful weather. It was raining, there was lightning in the area, um, and they ended up 16 minutes before launch, uh, had to scrub the launch because of the weather constraints. So last night, this was a view of the launch pad from, uh, uh, from several miles away. And what I find interesting is, here's the floodlit uh, rocket on the launch pad, but you see these shadows cast on the clouds. That's actually the shadows of the, the rocket and the launch pad uh, being uh, cast from those really bright floodlights. So this was a view of the, the launch pad early this morning before sunrise. And uh, again, looking at that same very smooth water, it looks much, much uh, uh, better than, uh, than Wednesday did. And here was our sunrise this morning uh, with the uh, pad in the foreground. And so when the crew woke up about 9 a.m., uh, 7 a.m. mountain time, uh, they did the usual routine. They had uh, breakfast. The typical uh, breakfast uh, going away meal is steak and eggs. And then they uh, get turned over to the SpaceX um, uh, preparation crew, and they get in their pressure suits and, uh, and then get ready to go out to the pad. And uh, so there's Doug Hurley, ready and raring to go. And uh, Bob Benkin is obviously pretty excited to, to get off uh, the ground as well. And so this is uh, the ultimate selfie. The person in the center is, uh, is Jim Bridenstine. He's the, uh, the NASA administrator, the, the head of NASA, with the two crew members in the background. And so uh, I'm sure anybody that's watched uh, launches in the past, you see the crew walk down a, a pathway and get into what's called the Astrovan, which uh, used to be sort of a converted uh, RV. So since SpaceX is closely related to the Tesla Motor Company, um, Tesla provided a couple of new Astrovans in their uh, Tesla Model X uh, SUVs. And so here's uh, Here's uh, Bob Benkin, uh, I'm sorry, this is Bob Benkin, Doug Hurley, and their, their respective uh, families. Uh, this is, uh, is Bob Benkin's family, Doug Hurley's family. Uh, so they climb into the, I, I'm sorry, they're doing the social distancing hugs and, and waves goodbye. They climb into the, uh, to the Model X, and, uh, and then once the windows are rolled up, the families get one last chance to, to wave them off. And so here's the caravan uh, several hours ago this morning, making its way out to the launch pad. So here is the uh, Falcon 9 rocket sitting on the pad. Here is the, uh, the two uh, Astro vans climbing up the ramp to the launch pad. So here's our crew right at the bottom of the pad. Um, they get in a sort of a standard elevator. They go 250 feet up the side of the, uh, of the launch support structure, um, exit the elevators, and then uh, enter the, the, the walkway to the capsule. And it's always traditional uh, as they're heading toward their, uh, their uh, capsule to stop and, and uh, just admire the, the wonderful view from 250 feet up across the, the, the Florida landscape. And so this was uh, Bob Benkin and uh, Doug Hurley is right off to the, to the right here. But on Wednesday, uh, there was an image captured at the same spot in the countdown. So again, oops, sorry, I got a little, uh, little carried away here. So here's the, uh, the, the rocket, the uh, crew dragon on the end, the, the uh, crew access arm. Right here, you'll see that white blob. 
if you blow that up, that was uh, Bob Benkin on Wednesday in the same spot as that picture I just showed you today. So uh, you get a feel for the, uh, the lay of the land here as they're making their way into the capsule. And so again, this was a couple hours ago now. Um, uh, Benkin is on the left, Hurley is on the right, and there are five uh, SpaceX technicians uh, ready to tuck them into the Crew Dragon capsule. And uh, once they were tucked in, they're basically ready to go. And so the, uh, the hatch was closed, all of the external crew moves away from the launch pad, and, uh, and uh, these two folks are, are getting ready to, uh, to launch into orbit. So I think I neglected to say up front, uh, sort of the, the way this all works, this is called the commercial crew program. So in the past, space shuttle, Gemini, Apollo, Mercury, there were commercial companies that built these spacecraft, but NASA owned them and NASA operated them. What's different about the commercial crew program now is NASA helps support the design and uh, building of these rockets and spacecraft, but they effectively are renting the service of uh, getting their astronauts to and from the space station. So the spacecraft, the rocket, the launch pad now really belongs to SpaceX in this case. And starting next year, Boeing will be uh, presumably doing the same thing. So this is the beginning of, uh, of commercial transportation to and from Earth orbit. So I think at that point, I, uh, I would like to turn us over to NASA TV. Um, we are joining about 15 minutes before, before launch or 20 minutes before launch. Uh, they're scheduled to take off at about uh, um, 122 mountain time. And uh, it'll take them about uh, 10 minutes to get into orbit. Um, once they're in orbit, I think we'll cut back and uh, try to answer whatever questions uh, the folks in the audience have. So uh, if, uh, if need be, I'll jump in verbally and, uh, and talk through anything that's happening. But uh, until then, let's just uh, enjoy the show and uh, go DM2. Sounds good. All right. I'm going to start sharing my screen and we'll jump over to NASA TV. That's about 60% of the way full, so things are looking good. Second stage is getting ready to begin the liquid oxygen loading. After they finish chilling in the lines that you see on the monitor, they'll begin the load at T minus 16 minutes and 30 seconds. The range right now is go, ready to support. Weather continues to be go. Uh, as we inch our way closer, uh, we're keeping our fingers crossed. Uh, we're waiting to uh, hear if anybody calls out an issue, but for the moment, as you can see on the screen, it looks good. Now, on the Dragon Tide, the Dragon Mission Director and the team there are reporting no issues. They've done their communications checkouts. The crew access arm, as you can see, is retracted away from the spacecraft. The crew is strapped in and they are ready to go. Now, final instructions will be going to the crew at T minus 10 minutes. The crew displays will be configured for launch, and that setup will give astronauts Bob Benkin and Doug Hurley insight into how the launch is proceeding and provides constant updates on vehicle health. We've already heard the crew give their go, close their visors, and get ready for launch. For Dragon, it'll enter terminal count at T minus five minutes. When it transitions to internal power, we'll hear continued callouts on the countdown net as we get close to zero and to liftoff. But right now, at T minus 18 minutes, 15 seconds, everything continues to be go for an on-time launch. So Dan, Jesse, things are looking pretty good. How are they doing over at your stand? Things are great from about 15 feet away from you, John I, and honestly, things are looking pretty great down at the pad there. We're seeing a lot more blue in the sky. Green is the color we want when we're talking about weather, and that's where we're sitting right now. So we're continuing to count down. We are under 18 minutes away from liftoff. Again, it's an instantaneous liftoff um, at 
Uh, it's going to be 12, 22, and 45 seconds here on the West Coast, 3, 22, and 45 seconds over on the East Coast there in Florida. Just a reminder, it's going to be about a nine-minute ride up to orbit for the Falcon 9 and Bob and Doug on board Dragon. It'll be a two-stage flight, so we'll see the first stage fly until we hear Miko, or main engine cut off, about two and a half minutes into flight. After that, the second stage will take over and continue to power them the rest of the way. Second engine cutoff comes in just under nine minutes at about eight minutes and 44 seconds. Following that second stage completing its job, It'll continue to coast for about three minutes. It'll do a, a slight attitude adjustment and null out any rate, so make sure it's not in any kind of a spin before they do separation. So that's when the Dragon spacecraft will physically separate from the Falcon 9 vehicle and Bob and Doug will be flying free. It's about a 19 hour ride if we launch today on time. So that means Bob and Doug will get on orbit They'll have a number of burns or those firings of those Draco thrusters that they'll do over Stage two, several. locked load started. We hear the locks. The liquid oxygen load has now started on stage two. But again, they're going to be doing a series of burns on the way uphill towards the International Space Station 5 spread out over the, the first 16 hours or so of their flight until they get much closer and it's time uh, for that approach and docking. And we are expecting that with an on-time launch to happen today. Uh, that'll be coming tomorrow in the afternoon. All right. Now that we're under 16 minutes away, we have a special guest joining us. I'm going to toss it over to Jesse. We are T minus 15 minutes and 45 seconds from liftoff of our second demonstration mission today. And we have the honor of having SpaceX's president and COO, Gwen Shotwell, join us. Thanks, Gwen, for coming out and taking a few minutes to chat with us. Thanks, Jesse. <laughs> we know you've been on console. Um, how's the countdown been going so far in there? Countdown is clean today, just like it was Wednesday. Uh, we did clear the weather hurdles sooner mm -hmm. uh, than we did on Wednesday. And the only thing we're watching right now is downrange weather and lightning at the staging location. Of course. But we will <laughs> clear that hurdle at uh, T minus seven minutes. Awesome, great, very exciting. Um, now I'm gonna throw it back to 2012 because you were on console for Dragon when it was first making its way to the space station. How does that experience compare to today? So uh, I was nervous then. I stopped getting nervous for launches. Today I'm nervous again. <laughs> Super nervous. Stomach and throat. Understandable. Um, no, it's a fantastic, fantastic day today. I'm really excited. The team is pulled together. It's such a professional operation. And when I say team, by the way, I mean SpaceX and NASA. This, uh, these folks have been working incredibly hard and have done an, a, a fantastic job. Yes, and we are all so excited. And we know that you have to get back into inside of Mission Control, but is there anything that you wanted to say before liftoff to NASA and SpaceX? Well, I want to thank NASA, of course, uh, for their, uh, their generosity and their help with getting to this place. I want to thank all the SpaceXers who have come together uh, to make this moment uh, in history. And uh, I want to thank Elon for hiring me. <laughs> <laughs> we thank Elon for hiring you as well. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us. We'll let you get back to Mission Control. Um, and good luck with launch today. Thanks, Jesse. And Godspeed, Bob and Doug. <laughs> Well, we are so excited. We are just a few minutes away from countdown. So we are going to turn it over to Dan and John for the final minutes in terminal count. Uh, take it away, John. T minus 13 minutes, 30 seconds, continuing to count down. We are continuing to load fuel onto the first stage. That should finish up in uh, just about six minutes. Fuel is completely loaded on the second stage. That's closed out. And we are continuing to load liquid oxygen on both the first and second stage. The liquid oxygen load beginning on the second stage uh, just uh, about three and a half minutes ago. We are also loading cryogenic helium into the storage vessels on the first and second stage, getting in the last little bits of helium when we keep it uh, cryogenic, cold and liquefied. That gets us, uh, just like we do with liquid oxygen, the maximum amount into the storage volume so that we can get the most performance out of the vehicle. 
Right now we are in a fairly quiet state on the vehicle. Ground pumps continuing to put the propellant in to first and second stages. Next significant issue call outs that we're going to hear will probably be inside the T minus 10 minutes when uh, they talk to the crew. We'll listen for that. But at the moment, everything continuing to look good at T minus 12 minutes and 20 seconds. We're getting real close now, John. It's only a little over 12 minutes away. Just a reminder for everybody, it's about a nine minute ride uphill. We'll have some dueling boxes going on as that first stage is going to be coming home while the second stage is carrying Bob and Doug into orbit. But obviously, we'll be keeping an eye on our astronauts the whole way uphill. Some of the calls that you'll be hearing as there will be what we call performance calls over the dragon to ground the entire way uphill. And you'll just hear uh, some of the SpaceX engineers calling out uh, trajectories and booster uh, performance. So we're always looking for that word nominal. I know that's one of John's favorite words. That's one of mine too. We want to hear nominal as much as possible up on the way uphill. You might also hear some number and letter combinations, and those correspond to the different abort zones that Bob and Doug are in during their flight uphill. There's one A and one B, which signify that they're on the first stage. Those carry them from there in the Cape all the way up to about the very top of North Carolina. And then we'll have 2A through 2E or 2 Echo, and that will be on the second stage. And that goes from North Carolina all the way up to about the tip of Newfoundland, uh, so in the northern Atlantic. And then there is a zone of the northern Atlantic that we're going to avoid. And so you should hear the call out be something similar to forward to Shannon. And that just refers to Shannon, Ireland, which uh, they'll be going off the coast of Ireland at the later stages of the uh, second stage if they have to abort. So just prepping you now for some of those calls. You're hopefully going to hear that word nominal a whole lot on the way uphill. Ten and a half minutes. Things are pretty quiet. As John I said, it'll pick up at right at about 10 minutes. We'll wait for the crew just to confirm that they're displays are in order. The crew is already strapped in and reported that they are go for launch and we'll continue to watch the fuel gauges tick up on the Falcon 9 vehicle until fueling cuts off at just about two minutes prior to launch. Dragon and SpaceX confirmed displays are configured for launch. SpaceX Dragon displays are configured for launch. Copy. Bob, Doug, on behalf of the entire SpaceX team, it's been a huge honor to help you get ready for today's historic mission. Know that we're with you, have an amazing flight, and enjoy those views of our beautiful planet. Thanks, Jay. Uh, it is absolutely our honor to be part of this uh, huge effort to get uh, the United States back in the launch business. Uh, we'll uh, talk to you for more, but thank you. Copy all. Thanks for those words. The SpaceX core. So again, that voice that's going to be talking to Bob and Doug throughout their mission from right here in Hawthorne, just offering a few quick words. The crew did confirm their crew displays are configured for launch. We are coming up on nine minutes and counting. We've gotten through T minus 10 minute with the crew discussions. Activity is now going to switch over to Falcon 9. Our next major event comes at T minus seven minutes. We begin what we call engine chill. Pre valves will open. Those currently separate propellants uh, on the first stage from getting down to the Merlin engines. We'll open the pre valves. That allowed fuel liquid oxygen to flow to the top of the pumps. And more importantly, when we open uh, the valves, that allow us to begin chilling the nine Merlin 1D turbo pumps on the first stage engine. It'll take a few minutes to get them cold enough to where they would then be ready to pass the large amounts of liquid oxygen through the pumps and into the main thrust chambers when we get to engine ignition at T minus two seconds. We don't want to try to run uh, highly chilled liquid oxygen through a warm pump. Uh, you would flash that into gas and running gas Starting through a high speed pump breath. is not a good thing. So right now we are waiting for T minus seven minutes. That'll start the engine chill. Shortly after that, we will also get the fuel shut down.
listening to the SpaceX launch director in the background there. As I mentioned, at T-minus seven minutes as we start the chill, we will also get into the uh, final topping off of stage one fuel, and then the fuel load will complete. Stage one and stage two engine chill has started. We've heard the call out. Stage one engine chill has started. That's gone up to the crew so that they've got situational awareness. As I mentioned, the pre-valves are open. And now we are topping off for stage fuel, getting ready to finish the fuel load. Liquid oxygen load on first and second engine stage will continue until the last three to two minutes of the countdown. We should hear that call out RP-1 load complete coming up at about six minutes. Again, RP-1 is just that densified kerosene or that rocket fuel that Falcon 9 is going to be used to power Bob and Doug to orbit today. And stage one fuel is closed out. Right on time. That call out indicates that the fuel loading on the first stage uh, is complete. Draining back the lines now. So first stage and second stage fuel are complete. Liquid oxygen loading is continuing on both stages. You can see on the view on the left side of the monitor, the condensation, uh, the cold gas wrapped around the stages as the tank skins are chilled by the densified liquid oxygen picking up the humidity Falcon from the Florida air. Line. It looks like at this moment we're a little more than 90% full on the oxidizer on the first stage, ticking up towards that 80% mark on the second stage. We'll be counting down all the way till about two or three minutes, as John and I just said, until everything is loaded. Falcon 9 heaters closing out. And then we will be go for launch. Dragon has transitioned to configure for terminal count. Vehicle tanks pressing for strongback retract. We're pressurizing the Falcon 9 tanks. We're going to open the clamp arm around the second stage and begin to retract the strong back. We'll move back about two degrees. That'll get us to the liftoff position. At liftoff, the strong back will then recline about 45 strong degrees away. Started. Stage two, RP1 bleed. Launch director called out the strong back retract has started on the left. You'll see it go back just a couple of degrees. Stage one, RPM lead. We are just four minutes away from liftoff. Again, at this moment, Bob and Doug are really just laser focused on those displays. They have insight directly into Dragon and the Falcon 9. They're able to see where their fuel loading is at, how everything's progressing down with the count. AFTS final setup started. Three and a half minutes from launch. And the strong back is now reclining away from the Falcon 9. back igniter purges. I'll go bleed. Dragon has transitioned to terminal count and is on internal power. Stage one, locks load, close out. 
Okay, we're at T minus two minutes, 42 seconds. Stage one, locks load is closed out. Stage two will continue to load for about another half a minute or so. Once we get the completion of stage two locks loading, we have to vent down the line so you'll see another large white cloud coming off of the strong back. That'll be normal. That'll happen Vehicle around transitioning to T minus power. one minute and 40 seconds. We're going on internal power now. Just a few seconds away from the stage two locks load being complete. It's been almost nine years since we've been in this position. A lot of work done by thousands of people to get to this point. All our eyes focused on two now. Stage two locks load is closed out. Propellant fills are complete. Dragon is in auto idle. Stage two locks load complete. All fuel, all oxidizer on Falcon 9. One minute, 34 seconds to go till launch. Ground gas closeouts is starting. Falcon 9 is in startup. Dragon is in countdown. FTS is armed for launch. Under a minute now, the FTS, the flight termination system, has been armed. Dragon, SpaceX, go for launch. SpaceX, Dragon, we're go for launch. Let's light this candle. T-minus 30 seconds. Stage one tanks pressing for flight. T-minus 15 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Zero. Ignition. Liftoff of the Falcon 9 and Crew Dragon. Go NASA. Go SpaceX. Godspeed. Bob and Doug. America has launched. And so rises a new era of American space flight. And with it, the ambitions of a new generation continuing the dream. 20 seconds into flight, stage one propulsion is nominal. Plus 30 seconds into this historic mission. Flying crew on board Dragon and Falcon 9 and look at them go. Falcon power telemetry nominal. M1D throttle down. We're throttling down to get ready for the period of maximum dynamic pressure. We're in the throttle bucket. Reports say all systems are go. Vehicle is supersonic. We've exceeded Mach 1 on the Falcon 9. M1D throttle up. We're throttling back up to full power as we're one through Bravo. Max Q. Copy, one Bravo. And we heard that one Bravo call out. That's just the second aboard zone that they're in. They'll continue to be on this until the first stage has done its job and they switch over to the second. At this point, Bob and Doug pulling about 2.3 Gs, 2.3 times the Earth's gravity, already moving at over 1,500 miles per hour. We've heard the call out for MVAC engine chill. That's getting the MVAC engine ready to light. That'll come at about 2.44 into flight. Right now, everything continuing to look good. Next major event coming up is gonna be the triple We'll have main engine cutoff of the nine first stage engines, stage separation, and then ignition of the second stage engine to continue to carry astronauts into orbit. 
Coming up in about 20 seconds. M M1D throttle down. We heard we're throttling down the Merlin engines on the first stage. And we have Miko. Miko. Two Alpha. Falcon stage separation confirmed. Copy, two Alpha. MVAC ignition. All right, we have stage separation confirmed. The first stage beginning its flight back. The second stage being powered by that single Merlin 1D vacuum engine has ignited and is now carrying Bob and Doug into orbit. So they're gonna continue under the power of this second stage. Stage two propulsion is nominal. Which will cut off at Seco or second engine cut off at about eight minutes and 44 seconds into today's flight. So a little over five minutes to go still on this second stage. You heard the call out to Alpha, so they're now in the longest abort zone that carries them all the way from about North Carolina up the eastern seaboard almost to Canada. Things looking good though, getting good call outs, nominal propul pul propulsion on that second stage. Bob and Doug continuing to make their way into orbit. Dragon SpaceX nominal trajectory. Acquisition of signal in Bermuda. SpaceX Dragon nominal trajectory. All right, here in nominal trajectory, so Dragon pointed in the right direction, continuing to make their flight uphill. Heard acquisition of signal Bermuda. That's one of the other ground stations that they're using to get telemetry and data back from this spacecraft. Stage two propulsion is still nominal. little over four minutes, 40 seconds into the flight. Bob and Doug flying at more than 5,600 miles Dragon per SpaceX hour. Dragon SpaceX nominal trajectory. Already almost 200 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center. Nominal trajectory continuing. And while they continue uphill, it looks like we are getting a view of the first stage as well. Yep, on your right screen, you can see that first stage with the grid fins deployed. It's making its way back to attempt to land on our drone ship. Of course, I still love you today. And we're just about a minute, uh, a couple minutes away from the entry burn, and that's where three of the nine Merlin engines do ignite to help slow the vehicle down as it re-enters back into the Earth's atmosphere. And then after the entry burn will be the landing burn, which is just a single engine Dragon, burn. SpaceX nominal trajectory. And you heard nominal starting trajectory. chill for entry burn. There's that call out. They are still on a nominal trajectory on Dragon, still on second stage. And that's that MVAC engine on second stage on your left screen. Again, on your right screen is that first stage booster coming back towards our drone ship. Of course, I still love you. We're about a minute away from entry burn. Meanwhile, that second stage continuing to power Dragon into orbit. Again, if you're keeping an eye on that timer, that's gonna continue to burn until eight minutes and 44 seconds into flight. So a little over two minutes from now, we'll hear the call out Seco. It'll then be a little stage under- Stage two propulsion a little is still over. good a little over three minutes until Dragon physically separates from the second stage of the Falcon 9 after the upper Dragon stage SpaceX, gets a chance. Dragon SpaceX, nominal trajectory. Dragon copies, nominal trajectory. Continuing to check in with Bob and Doug as they are on a nominal trajectory. Just about 10 seconds away from that first stage, starting that entry burn on your right screen. We should be able to see that view live. 
stage one entry burn startup. And there is that entry burn Acquisition beginning. This burn lasts about 36 seconds long. Stage two FTS is saved. While that entry burn continues, we're just about a minute away from SECO. We'll have a number of events all happen in rapid succession. It'll Talking be the shutdown. second engine cutoff. Stage one we'll be looking for down. that uh, stage one landing burn shortly after. Yeah, actually, just within a few seconds of each other. It's such a cool view on your left screen, seeing Bob and Doug on Dragon. Right now, you can see the displays that they are seeing right now themselves. Terminal guidance. And back throttle step. We are coming up 25 seconds or so away from SECO, or second engine cutoff. This is also the point where Bob and Doug are experiencing their highest G-force. We're seeing the counter tick up to right about 1.8. Copy, Shannon. You heard Shannon, so that just means they're in their final abort zones. If they were to abort at this point, would either be in abort to orbit or to land off the coast of Ireland. Standing by for second one cutoff started. confirmation. And back throttle step. And back shut down. Stage one landing layer. Confirmation of Seco second engine cutoff. Now we are waiting for our first stage to make its way to our drone ship. Of course, I still love Dragon, you. Dragon SpaceX nominal orbital insertion. Launch escape confirmation system is disarmed. Nominal orbital Dragon insertion. Nominal Stage orbital one landing insertion. Deploy. And what you're seeing on your screen is a live view of our drone ship, where our first stage will be coming down. Looks like we lost that live view, but we'll wait for confirmation of that landing shortly here. Falcon 9 first stage is successfully landed. And the there you can see on your screen, Falcon 9 has landed. This is the first Falcon 9 to carry humans to orbit, so very exciting for us. And as you can see on your right screen, Bob and Doug are still making their way to their targeted orbit. <laughs> M1D to recovery one. So exciting today. M1D. <laughs> it doesn't stop. It does not stop. All right, we did we did hear again that call out good orbital insertion, so that means Falcon 9 and Dragon right now exactly where they're supposed to be. M1D to FRC on recovery one. And it's right at about 12 minutes when Can Dragon will separate. Looks like we saw a zero G indicator floating around there. I know Bob and Doug owe us a little bit about what exactly that is that they brought up with them. <laughs> and before separation, before Dragon initiates separation from the second stage, they do make sure to make, they, they do ensure that the vehicle is not spinning and it is in good con condition before we separate. That's right, the upper stage does small attitude maneuver using some cold gas thrusters built into the rocket body itself. Exactly, so we do expect that separation to occur in about a minute from now, but they do wait until they have full confirmation that it is ready to separate. Such cool views. I cannot get over this view that we are seeing right now. Bob and Doug on the right screen, inside of Crew Dragon, out in space. Yeah, already 200 kilometers over planet Earth, or a little over 124 miles, traveling in excess of 2,700 meters, 27,000 meters per second, or about 16,000 miles per hour. Again, we're just standing by. That separation event should be coming up shortly. Then they'll begin a series of checks on the Draco thrusters that are going to be used to maneuver and then power Dragon on its flight to the International Space Station. Standing by for separation. Expected loss of signal, wallops. It sounds like we had an expected LOS loss of signal with one of the ground stations. 
waiting for confirmation now of that. Dragon setup. separation confirmed. Dragon and separation <laughs> confirmed. <laughs> there is a great view right in front of you Compound of dragon December. separating. Separation confirmed. And there's that call out. Dragon is now officially making its way to the International Space Station today. <laughs> Dragon SpaceX with that separation call. Uh, we have a few words for you from our Falcon 19. Standing by. Dragon, Chief Engineer on Dragon to Ground. Bob Doug, on behalf of the entire launch team, thanks for flying with Falcon 9 today. We hope you enjoyed the ride and wish you a great mission. Thanks, Bala. Congratulations to you and the F9 team for the first uh, human ride for Falcon 9, and it was incredible. Uh, appreciate all the hard work, and uh, thanks for the great uh, ride to space. Copy all. Good I'd luck. like to be proud of you guys and the rest of the team. Uh, thank you so much for what you've uh, done for us today, putting America back into low Earth orbit up from the Florida coast. Copy all. Good luck. Godspeed. All right, so Bob and Doug. All right, uh, Lisa, can you uh, hear me? I can, yeah, go ahead. That was amazing, Steve. That was, that was marvelous. Uh, it just was textbook. Uh, couldn't have asked for any better, uh, any better launch. Um, I think we're going to leave the, uh, the NASA TV up in the background, if that's okay. And uh, why don't we try to answer some questions? That sounds great. We have a few questions from our Facebook audience. It looks like we have an incredible Facebook audience for this historic event. I, I am so impressed um, by what happened. Can you take us through the beginning of the launch during those fueling stages? What was all that, uh, what looked like smoke coming off of the rocket? Okay. The, uh both uh, the first and second stage, they're uh, uh, powered by uh, chilled kerosene and liquid oxygen. And so both of uh, liquid oxygen is cryogenic. It's several hundred degrees below zero. They also chill the kerosene because that's more efficient. Uh, you get more, um, more kerosene in the tanks. And so as they're Filling the tanks, they, they have to bleed some of the pressure off. And since that's such a, a cold vapor coming out, it interacts with the water vapor. And the, if you've ever been to Florida this time of year, it's really humid. And so all of the humidity in the air condenses into uh, ice crystals. And uh, that's what you see. It's not actually smoke. It's, uh, it's uh, sort of an ice fog venting from the rocket. Great. And then similarly, some of those close shots to the launch pad had a lot of liquid coming off of that. Is that related to the launch or is it raining in Florida? No, uh, I believe that was, uh, you know, this vapor cloud or the ice cloud when it gets far enough away, then it, it turns into water droplets instead of ice crystals. And uh, so it was sort of a localized uh, it's like having a sprinkler going off uh, if you're trying to take pictures of something and you get uh, drops on your lens. Great. Um, can you tell us more about the launch teams? We heard a lot of calls from a lot of different places during that NASA feed. Who all is speaking to the astronauts and to each other? Okay. Well, the, the view that you're seeing here is the, uh, the uh, SpaceX Control Center in Hawthorne, California. And that's one of the things that's very different now compared to launching the space shuttle or earlier NASA spacecraft is all of the controls would be either in Houston uh, or in, uh, in Florida at, uh, at Kennedy Space Center. In fact, the way it used to work uh, for uh, um, shuttles was the, the Florida Control Center would, would be in charge up until they got to orbit and then they would switch over to the Houston Control Center. So there's still a NASA team monitoring everything in, uh, in Florida and uh, a launch uh, 
team, but as soon as they uh, they get off the pad, they they switch control to the to the Hawthorne California Center. Um, we have some questions here from our Zoom audience. Are the two astronauts are they wearing flight suits or spacesuits, and they look significantly different than uh, spacesuits that I've seen lately? So that's that's true. These are are new spacesuits designed by SpaceX specifically for the, the Crew Dragon. Um, if you remember in the shuttle days when they would get on board, they had what were called the pumpkin suits. They were these orange pressure suits. And they were in common with what uh, you know, a lot of uh, like high performance jet aircraft pilots would wear. They're really intended just to be a pressure suit if they lose uh, pressure in the cabin. And so these new uh, SpaceX suits, it's the same idea. They provide the, the safety of being from here until they get to the space station. Um, and they, they do look very different. They're much easier to get into than the old suits. Um, but the one thing, just in case you're wondering, is uh, there's totally separate suits for space walks at the uh, International Space Station. They'll still be using the old uh, shuttle suits for that. And those are the big sort of Michelin uh, tire man looking suits or Pillsbury Doughboy. I'm not sure which is <laughs> more complimentary. Um, so the suits they're wearing now, they're really just a safety measure in case they lose pressure in the cabin of, uh, of the crew driving. Right. Um... What we saw the first stage of the rocket land back on that drone ship. What happens to the second stage? So the second stage uh, burns up. It uh, it shortly after they uh, separate the dragon, which they've already done, they turn the stage around so the rocket engine is facing forward. It's, it's uh, you know against the path of the uh, orbit, and they fire the engine so that it falls out of orbit and doesn't cause space debris. So it uh, typically that, that will re-enter either over the Indian Ocean or somewhere in the Pacific, and it's it's just a way of clearing that uh, that stuff out of uh, orbit so that it doesn't uh, cause a problem. But uh, it was exciting to see the the first stage. That's one of the the unique things about the SpaceX Falcon 9 is they're designed to retrieve. The first stage and so it lands either back at the the launch site in either florida or uh, vandenberg air force base in california and then the ones that uh, depending on what they've launched they may not be able to make it back to the launch site so they come down on what's called a autonomous drone ship and that's a barge about the size of a football field and uh, you saw that uh, with the Falcon 9 perched on it. Um, so it, it lands on that. They turn around and bring it back to Port Canaveral in Florida and, and uh, refurbish the, the booster for uh, another flight. That's amazing. Uh, I would just like to thank everyone for joining us today. Steve, do you have any final words to share about today's launch? Well, uh, I mean, obviously success is a wonderful thing and they're just starting this mission. Um, they will be uh, docking with the space station. I think it's around 8 or 8.30 a.m. mountain time tomorrow. And uh, then they'll be on board the uh, ISS for somewhere between one and four months. So this really is a test flight of the, the Crew Dragon. They'll be evaluating all the systems uh, you know, regularly while it's docked to the space station. And then they'll, uh, they'll be coming back uh, home when when it's time for them to, to come home. Um, and then the next mission, uh, assuming everything goes well with this, will likely carry four NASA astronauts into orbit late this year. And, uh, and then that, that'll be the first operational mission. Um, if I could, I'd like to put up one last slide just to give folks uh, a... Uh, uh, some links where they can follow this. Uh, let's see. Maybe I can do this. Or maybe not. Uh, 
You might have to use the controls at the bottom of the PowerPoint screen when you share it. Happens to me. There we go. Yeah. Can you see that now? No, I cannot see your screen. It's because I guess I'm not sharing. All right, luckily I'm not uh, controlling the uh, the mission today. <laughs> Let me try this one more time. Okay, is Yes, that looks great. Okay, so there's a couple of websites uh, that if folks want to keep in touch with uh, what's going on, the nasa.gov website should have uh, official NASA uh, updates. And at the very front page, there will be a link to get to NASA TV. They will have more or less continuous coverage on this mission, at least until they get on board the station and probably for much of tomorrow. Uh, the, the bottom link is a, is a, a group called spaceflightnow.com. And they uh, do a wonderful job of posting regular updates on, on what's happening with these missions and lots of other missions. In fact, I was watching the status updates on them on my TV screen at home here so that I could uh, keep up with uh, what was happening in addition to the uh, NASA TV coverage. So um, anyway, thank you everyone for joining us. This was uh, sort of an experiment to do a launch with the uh, social distancing, but uh, I want to thank uh, Lisa and, uh, and Kim Evans, our, uh, our crew, who uh, did all the technology and kept this all running. And, and thanks to all of our audience for joining us today. So we'll uh, see you again sometime soon. Take care. Thank you, Steve. Bye, everybody.